Day 72. Month. I don't know. Day. I just don't know. I tried everything. I'm plugging the power power and then plugging it back in. Switching monitors. Hitting it with a monkey wrench, everything! It's official. My computer... ...is dead. Game. A game that's, that's, that's fast. A game that's. A, a game that's cool. A game that. A game that's stylized. That, uh -huh! Oh. Oh. No, 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 God, no, no, not that game. But. I'm on the right track. Capcom, no. Now what's Capcom made lately? Oh! oh. <sighs> Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Alrighty then. Hey girl! I finally have an excuse to use you, girl! Do this. So way back in the days, you know, the days, the heydays, the times, the 90s. Back then, there was a little thing going around called the Bit Wars. A dark time where bits took up arms and charged into the fields of gaming. They fought for years for the title of the best console ever. The Super Nintendo system took the lead with its badass games, killer music, and mountain of RPGs. But the Sega Genesis caught up to the SNES with its blast processing. But eventually, everybody wondered, what in the fuck is blast processing, and was then held up mostly by Sonic, Michael Jackson, and... Basketball. But then, the N64 came out, and Sega caved. Weak, before the unstoppable might of Super Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie and Tooie, Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, Paper Mario, Donkey Kong 64, GoldenEye, kinda, Perfect Dark, kinda, Pokemon Snap, Yoshi's Story, Diddy Kong Racing, Conqueror's Bad Fur Day, Star Fox 64, Mario Kart, and Super Smash Brothers! So Nintendo was living the good life, and as far as I was concerned, carrying both of the video game market. Or so I thought. For deep in the realms of the video game industry, Sony, you know those guys that made uh, TVs and cameras, were in the works of making a video game console. The Sony PlayStation, with 32 bits of beautiful gaming bliss. It understood that bits weren't really what made a game fun, but rather it was the gameplay. But that didn't stop them from making several standout 3D games. Like Crash Bandicoot and Resident Evil and, uh... Oh, and Metal Gear Solid! But the PlayStation also had a large following of 2D games that kept with the classic formula. Like Rayman! Yeah! And Castlevania Symphony of the Night. <sighs> okay? I want to know something else about Symphony of the Night. Was that it was supposed to be just like a tiny little project made by the developers while they were working on two 3D games for the N64. Which, funny enough, those 3D games were, you know, a little... <laughs> while Castlevania Symphony of the Night was very...
So first off is the setup. Dracula is a bad motherfucker and Richter Belmont's all like, fuck that shit and goes to Dracula's castle to kick his ass. And then we see what 32 bits can really do. Die, monster. You don't belong in this world. Sing it, sister. You steal men's souls and make them your slaves. Oh, damn. I'm gonna need to go down to the mart and buy some burn heal because that's gotta hurt. What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets. But enough talk. How about you? Then the fight commences between Richter and Count Dracula. But because I'm so shit at side-scrollers, I sort of die. But that doesn't matter because you're saved by what can only be described as the power of love. So then Dracula is defeated, transitioning into the opening dialogue explaining that Dracula isn't defeated. Fuck you! So apparently on top of Dracula coming back, Richter has gone away, meaning our main protagonist is going to be Alucard, who was supposed to be trapped in some sort of Odin sleep forever, but now isn't because... He's just too damn sexy. <laughs> And so the idea of the game is to go through your massive house to find the king of the house so you can defeat him and reclaim your lost friend. Won't be too hard though, because Alucard can blow things up with a sword. Yeah! Yeah! Fuck you all. I don't even care if you don't cave in after I smashed out a huge chunk of your center. Now begins the genocide of the fishy man. So this is how the game is drastically different from the other Castlevanias. You start out with a pretty sweet assortment of armor and a sword that one-shots everything. And even if it makes you start out very OP, you get this feeling that Alucard is truly powerful. But then, in comes this asshole! And takes away all your power, armor, and weapons, then leaves with nothing short of a <laughs> Meaning that most of the game is then spent not only trying to find Dracula, but also trying to find weapons, armor, and the power to defeat him. Making the game more focused, around an open-world RPG feel. Which is fine, I'm able to accept changing a game if it's executed, right? And I've played a fair share of RPGs in my time, I'll play Paper Mario. That's an RPG, right? One of the first things I noticed about this game are certain items called relics. These items can give you all sorts of different powers, like turning into a bat to get farther, or a super jump to get super high. These relics are, for the most part, pretty easy to find and are necessary in getting through the castle. Like this one, which makes candles drop hearts or this one which gives people names are you insane okay so following the very metroid-esque style of gaming you mainly walk around the mansion following your very metroid-esque map trying to find the story as you go can you feel that can you feel it i can't it's not bad to have an open world type game. Hell, Fallout 3 is one of my favorite games of all time and it was all open world. But it, it, I'm just, wh where the fuck do I go? Should I go there? Does that actually go anywhere? How in the hell can this be this? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know, I'm thinking too much. I just, uh, maybe I'll just go kill a skeleton. Usually it makes me feel better. There he goes, throwing a bone gracefully through the air. Oh boy! Uh, are you okay, Alucard? It, it's all right. It's just a bone. You have many. Actually, from this overactive jump back animation to the opening cinematic to the stage-like acting to the music being either choir music. <laughs> heavy metal you can see how overly dramatic this game is like check out this soldier maybe he was a soldier that fought alongside other soldiers who all tried to kill Dracula but failed and now they walk the halls haunted by the memories of their past failures driven by <laughs> 
So about the controls. Hitting up on the D-pad and then square does the usual item use. I like how even when the game's made so many changes, it still keeps little things like the item button intact. However, if you hit up on the D-pad and don't press square, Alucard does a... Oh yeah, Alucard is one bad mother. Shut your mouth. I'm only talking about Alucard. I can do it. This game is a difficulty level that I'm, and I'm, that I'm not used to. I mean, when I first started, this game was a piece of cake, but once death took all my shit, I felt crippled. And I do realize that this was intentional, and the point is you're supposed to adapt, but I, I couldn't for some reason. The controls were artificially stilted, and even the tiniest attack could send Alucard flying. I was so focused on not dying and just moving from one save point to the next that I couldn't even enjoy any of the exploring. The thing this game is built on! I mean, I just want to go there! Legends tell of the magical rest of the game, but our brave hero seems to be having some trouble and- <laughs> Stop. Why? Stop. Dude, what are you? Stop. Stop. What do you want? Don't hate the game, dude. Hate yourself because you suck. Dude, fuck you, man. I don't even know how to play this Mega Man RPG hybrid. That's because you keep playing it like a Mega Man RPG hybrid. Also, your weapons suck. Have you even found the merchant? <laughs> What's your flavor? Tell me what's your flavor? Uh, what's your flavor? Tell me what's your flavor? Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. I was just uh, catching up on some of some, some reading. Anyway, today we are going to be talking about Castlevania Symphony of the Night, my favorite Castlevania game. I really love this game. I mean, I had the fucking opening scene memorized. And the music. That music. I mean, each area's music fit the atmosphere perfectly. The prologue gave you that feeling of, fuck yeah, I'm gonna go kill me a vampire. And the song, when you first get to the castle's a la carte, starts off kinda eerie, and then you get over it and it gives you an eargasm? What? Yes, I'm a musician, what of it? Anyway, enough about the music. Symphony of the Night is a game that provides a good challenge with that sense of satisfaction when you complete something. Remember, I'm the one that got Dradix to play Dark Souls. You can watch it here. The combat in this game is actually fairly simple. You press a button and Alucard attacks. Now there are certain other things you can do, like the spells and certain weapons had special attacks, such as the rapier. This simple combat led to the player having to pick the right opportunity to attack since there was no dodge and simply tanking a hit really isn't recommended. The boss fights are pretty diverse about how you should approach them and offer a great challenge most of the time. But regardless, it's a very fun gameplay style that is always going to be a classic for me. Now, I may be a tad biased, because this is the game that got me into video gaming in the first place. But it's still fun. Go play it. Now. I guess I can't just assume that the game will be just like the old Castlevanias. It's different. Different console, platform, PSX, whatever. <laughs> so, let's see how far we can get. Now I'm in a weird looking circle thing that once you open it, out comes a... Also, moving into the story a little bit, you come across a woman named... Maria! She, apparently, is someone very close to Richter, and she's trying to find him too. Also, we get a good look at Alucard's rigid personality. What do you hear? Um... 
so... Oh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I was just thinking about something. So did- Ah, oh, fuck! Did you find the librarian yet? You know, the librarian. Sells things. Things you can use. You know, like librarians do. So I should just go stand in the corner then. Yeah, go for it. So there's this librarian. He lives in one of the smallest libraries I've ever seen and doesn't really have anything to do with being a librarian other than the fact that he's in a library. What he does do is give you weapons. I mean, after some gracious persuasion. Can I have some weapons? Well, I wouldn't want to go against the master's orders. I have money. Welcome! Apart from giving you weapons, the librarian also gives you the occasional item. The cheapest, and in my opinion, second most useful item in the game is the blue door lockbreaker. Throughout the game, you'll find these big doors that are surrounded by a blue aura. If you try to open the doors, you'll be told that they're sealed. Magically! The blue door lockbreaker is what's used to open these doors. In other news, I'm in this godforsaken cave trying to figure out what I'm doing with my life and whoa, that is a snake. The beast fought hard. But it was no match for the Snake Slayer! <laughs> then you fight another... boss? A rather sexy woman that has wolves and tentacles... coming out of her legs. Why, Japan? I wanna like you. But you keep giving me reasons to call the police. Okay, apparently Alucard can't swim in water because I haven't gotten the learn how to fucking swim amulet. So to get across this long stretch of water, I have to ride on a boat with a creeper skeleton. I'll take you to a place which might be interesting for you. <laughs> Then you meet back up with Maria! I'm fucking done. Now, allow me to best explain what I remember from this conversation. Victor Richter? Simon Belmont? We, uh, Richter! Simon? Richter! <laughs> so essentially, Maria's trying to find Richter Belmont, and Alucard sort of trying to find him, but is mostly looking for his dad so he can kick his ass. It's a family thing. But eventually you do find Richter, and he's... Not quite himself. Open Hell's Gate! Come forth, my servants! Okay, so maybe not a lot of change, but he wants to hurt you, and that's bad. <laughs> this has led me to two assumptions. One, despite what the opening implies, Dracula wasn't defeated, but rather Richter was defeated and then put in some kind of hypnotic trance. Or two... Here's the drunk is shit! I'm looking at the castle in your dirty... <laughs> Also, I'm a wolf. Cause you know. Finally progressing a little bit more, I've entered into what I deem the heavy metal zone. And the section concludes with a fight with a raven man. In the dark night, past the fog and trees, death is all the vampire sees. Alucard hunts to find his father as the darkness grows even darker. Screams and cries are all that can be heard as the battle continues against this bird. And over the sound of the ever-ringing bell, quote the raven. FUCKING HELL! Then you get a ghost card that's basically your little partner throughout the game. You get a few of these guys, with one of the most helpful being the giant golden greatsword. I call him the Triple G. So after that, I decided to save my game, and... So apparently Alucard was hit with some sort of sleeping spell because he has a dream about his mom getting burned at the stake. You know, those things that you just dream about. Upon noticing this, Alucard reminds us of how much we love his voice. I'm coming, mother! I'll save you! But then Alucard's wet dream doesn't go the same way he remembers. You must despise humans. Begin by slaying that one over there. And because of Alucard's disbelief, his mother reveals herself to actually be a succubus. I rather enjoyed this fight, not just because I love the concept of a fight happening in a dream, 
but also because the enemy that you're fighting doesn't appear to be wearing any pants. So eventually you kill the succubus, wake up, save for rails, and then fall into a mine. Oh shit! There are spikes in the way! Foolish spikes! Spikes do not phase the snake slayer! <laughs> Also, despite the inevitable backtracking, the game at least makes it easy to get around the castle once you get the wolf, bat, and mist abilities. The wolf is probably my favorite though, mostly because of stuff like this. Oh god! Now, for another rousing session between Alucard and Maria. Victor, Victor? Simon Be- oh! Victor, Victor? Ugh. Lord of Castle. <laughs> Victor, Victor. Uh. Then you stumble across Richter Belmont again. However, before you meet up with him, you have a chance to decide which way to play. For the simple 100% ending, you can go in there and kill Richter Belmont. But if you follow a couple of steps to get magic glasses before you start the fight, you could potentially save Richter Belmont and get 200.6%. Because that kind of difference really matters, right? Maria comes in and says, Arigato gozaimasu. And you continue on to Dracula. And then what happens next is is probably one of the biggest what in the flying hell moments that I've experienced in games so far. And for those of you that have actually played the game, you already know what's coming next. And for the most part, so did I. Because when I started getting into Castlevania Symphony of the Night, one thing that I heard about it most was that at some point in the game, you're gonna have to play through the whole castle again, but upside down. However, for some reason, that didn't click in my head as you were going to play the entire castle literally as it was flipped. Upside down! I love this about games because it shows how creative developers can get when you give them enough imagination to work with. What's also great about this is how it works like the ocarina songs in The Legend of Zelda. Even if they're backwards, or in this case, upside down, they still work. So, let's see how quickly I can get this done. Starting kinda shittily, in fact, with a section full of cogs. You see, the idea of this section is to jump, attack, dodge, and uh, think all at once. Needless to say, this section sucks. Want my advice? The Mist is your best friend. As you'd probably expect, all the enemies and bosses in the Inverted Castle are completely different. The bosses are still pretty inventive, with the best one being Beezabub. <laughs> And despite how frustrating the inverted castle is, I'm at least able to go back to the library and listen to the music of my dreams. Why is there always something in all these games that keeps teaching me what love means? Finally, you come across death, and it's about here where I start to notice something. I always thought the voice acting was terrible, but I finally figured out what exactly is wrong with it. Everybody sounds like they're talking through a tube! Then for the master, I'll feast on your soul this night. So once you've reached death, he's not too hard if you've decked yourself out with enough armor, weapons, magic, and helping helpertons. <laughs> And after I defeated death, my game started to malfunction even more than usual. Like, yeah, it crashed once or twice during the beginning of all this, but once I killed death, it was like he left something behind. S something that would take vengeance on me. But frankly, I can't deal with it now. Not when I'm so close to the end. So, finally. After every battle, after every boss, after exploring everywhere, after collecting every item needed, after resetting the game over and over, fighting against every glitch that could be thrown at me, I'm ready to face DRACULA! So before you face Dracula, you come across a magical wizard that initially brought him back to life. He's a weird goblin looking thing named Shaft? Damn it, I already made a Shaft joke! Who's the silly internet reviewer who should have seen that coming? Dress! Damn right. So after dodging Shaft death marbles by turning into piss mist, you defeat the wizard and... Hey, what's going on out there? Nothing, father. Go back to sleep. So then, the battle begins between Alucard and Dracula. Behold my true form and despair! Now it finally comes down to the wire. I have to defeat Dracula before the game stops.
Don't you die on me, girl! Don't you die on me! Come on, girl! Come on, girl! You got this! You got this! Just hang on! Yeah! feels good. That feels good. And don't worry, that's the last like vacuum joke that I'm doing. I, I was just, just fucking around. Anyways, I... Aiden? Aiden, let me out. <laughs> Can I come? Hello? Jake, are you in the vacuum? Aiden, let me out. Aiden. D do you understand how hilarious that is? Aiden? Can I come hold, out? Hold, hold, hold that thought. I, I need to. I, I need to. I need to finish the thing first. Jim. Fuck you. Castlevania Symphony of the Night is a wonderful game that was interesting to play. It really got me out of the dark mood I was feeling and was challenging enough to keep me invested. For all the hard games that are out there that people praise for being just the right amount of difficulty, but just end up being fucking annoying, this is really where it's at. Some could even say that it made me a better person. So go ahead and play Castlevania Symphony and I, because despite all of the weird ass changes it decided to make, it still changed for the better, and at least it provided fun. But for now, good day, complete strangers. The name is Dradix, and I'm an expert.